Hoffman, thanks for being with us. Oh, good morning. Well, you are. When they said you're going to be live in the studio, I thought that's got to be a mistake. But you're here. I am here. Because you know, that to get, they'll get the word out to the tri-state, this is the place to be. It is. All I right. tell people when I leave Washington, D.C., I'm going back to civilization less. <laughs> that's right. All right. All right, Congressman, tell us, where are we uh, on the payroll standoff? As I understand it, although most Republicans don't think this is the optimal way to stimulate the economy, they're saying that if we're going to do this, it should be for a year. Not two months. That's true. The House of Representatives passed a bill last week that would extend the payroll tax cut, extend unemployment with significant reform, right, and also fix the doctor situation with the payment formula with Medicare for two years. Uh, the Senate was not able to come to an agreement, and they punted. Yeah, they're gone, aren't they? They punted, and they did exactly <laughs> what people don't like. They put in a two-month stopgap fix right. to get through the holidays and then went home. Right. And honestly, Les, the House of Representatives, the Republicans in the House, cannot accept punting. The American people are tired of that. When you have a difficult problem, you stay and work out your differences. Right now, our leadership, as well as eight conferee appointees uh, from the Repu House Republicans, are in Washington, D.C., waiting for Harry Reid in the Senate to come back. Okay and appoint their conferees so we can work out the differences. Let, let me tell you, since 1789, when there's a difference between the House and the Senate, you appoint a conference, you work it out. Right, right. We're talking with Congressman Larry Bouchant. Our number here is 423-2100. Outline, in a sort of a bullet point form, what are the differences between the perspective of the, of the Democrats that control the Senate and the House Republicans on this issue? Well, the main issue is the pay for us. How do you pay for this less? If you're going to extend uh, the uh, payroll tax, if you're going to extend right. unemployment, if you're going to do a dock fix, you know, House Republicans feel strongly that we need to off offset that spending. Right. Historically, it hasn't been. The, Sen the Senate Democrats and the president want to just do these things, add to the deficit, and that's where the big discussion comes in. They don't want to pay for anything in Washington, D.C. Right. Bill, you have a question for the congressman. Yeah, well, I don't understand why we just don't tell Obama to do what's right and do the pipeline to extend the payroll tax, which is not much, for a year. I mean, go ahead and get the pipeline started. That's, that's 20,000 jobs ready to go right, right now. Right. Yeah, thanks for your question. That's and that's what, Good point, Bill. That's another point and, of contention. And, it is. Uh, thanks, Bill. We don't do it from Canada. Yeah. They're going to send it to China. Right. That's exactly. exactly. No, no ifs, ands, or buts. Right. Everybody said that. Yeah, right. that's exactly right. And that's why House Republicans passed a one year bill that was very reasonable. It did have the pipeline in there. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, is the president uh, has, is kowtowing to environmental extremists. Canada isn't happy with us. They will build a pipeline to the Pacific and ship and, and sell the oil to China. They're going to sell their oil. They're not just going to say, well, we can't sell the oil in the United States, so they're just going to set it there. We've told the president these things. It's bad policy to morning, hunt for two is... months. Let me, let me finish on sure, why it's right bad ahead. policy, because uh, we have talked to multiple people that do payroll, and this is a disaster. Oh, yeah. How, how, are, you, how are you going to be able to – yeah, I mean, I'm a small business person. I don't know how we're going to be able to make the adjustments. I know we'll screw it up. That's for sure. It's an absolute disaster. Right. To make things even worse, they move the cap this cap, uh, on on, on uh, Social Security payments Doctor, so right. that so that uh, um, they it, so halfway through uh, this two month extension, there's some people that their rate may go up. Right. Uh, the payroll people just tell us this: this is just not doable. Small businesses in America are going to be are going to be hurting. Absolutely, William. You have a question for the congressman? Yes, I was uh, wondering why in uh, in the Constitution, Section Five of Article One says that uh, neither of the House shall adjourn without the consent of the other one. Yeah, they, technically, yeah, technically, neither House of Congress has adjourned. Uh, we're, they're in pro, what are called pro forma sessions right now. So that hasn't happened. And that's a good point because the President of the United States wants to appoint right. people uh, in, the rec in recess appointments. In the House of Representatives, we're not planning to recess to allow him to do that. If we were allow, would allow him to do that, he would appoint some uh, what we consider 
uh, very uh, partisan people to things like the National Labor Relations Board. We're not going to allow right. that to happen. So we're not consenting to uh, adjourn. Uh, we're in. We're technically in session. We're talking with Congressman Larry Bouchant about the latest standoff. Uh, I guess between the the Republicans and the White House. You know, a lot of folks in the sometimes referred to as the mainstream media. Uh, or just uh, pundits in, in general say that the Republicans in the House are being held hostage by the the radical Tea Party folks, and they're making bad policy decisions. How do you respond to that? It's totally ridiculous, Les. I mean, we have we have elected conservatives in the Republican Party. We stand on principle. Uh, that's honestly where most of the American people are. You saw the election that we just had. Right. The American people elected us to go to Washington, D.C., and change the, the direction that the country's headed in. We can, cannot continue to just kick the can down the road and go home for the holidays like the Senate has just done uh, and the Harry Reid is doing. The president's waiting to go on his Hawaiian vacation, by the way, which is costing U.S. taxpayers $3 million. Now, there, there I, don't, I don't begrudge presidents' vacations. They need to take them. I agree. Uh, but, you know, when there's things still pending in Washington, D.C., you don't go on vacation. Right. And right. uh, I was a heart surgeon before this. People had heart attacks on Christmas Day last year. Right, exactly. I worked. <clears throat> exactly. So I'm willing to be there. Uh, right now, our negotiators are there. If they call us, I will be back in Washington, D.C. in less than 24 hours, and we'll get this job done. All right. Are we going to get the job done? And if so, what will be the compromise, and when will it get done? Yeah, I think we will. I do not think and, uh, that uh, people should be worried that uh, their taxes will go up on January 1st and that unemployment won't be extended. And the, the physicians out there, I can tell you, shouldn't, shouldn't worry that we're not going to get the physician payment formula fixed. We will. Uh, the end game, I don't know yet. Uh, but let me, let me put it this way. No matter what the House Republicans would have done, we'd have been criticized. If right. we would have agreed to the two-month extension, the Democrats would have said they wanted a one-year. We wouldn't agree to it, so they had to do a stopgap because of the Republicans. Right. So we're going to stick to our guns, and I think next week we will get uh, we will get something done. I hope the president tells Harry Reid to bring the Senate back, point a conferees. Let's hash this out, come to an agreement, and that's what the American people want. I want to go back to the pipeline for a moment. I just finished a piece of litigation in your home county involving a pipeline that's been there for 30 years. Pipelines are all over this country. We have very strict rules, federal regulations, state regulations. These pipelines run behind homes and subdivisions and they don't create any problems what is the big deal with these environmentalist wackos have this chicken little attitude about something that's been a part of us for 30 40 years it's hard to understand yeah. isn't it Les? yeah uh, the reason is is because there is really almost nothing that we can do to please them if i mean some of these people less they would prefer that human beings didn't live on the surface of the earth. <laughs> right. I mean, they're that far removed from right. reality. There are pipelines going through the Nebraska in the area that's sure. under, con- in, in, under concern there by the people in Nebraska and the environmentalists. The fact of the matter is environmental studies have been done. This is ready to go. If there's a shovel-ready, so to speak, project, the pipeline is built in Tim Griffin's uh, district down in Arkansas. Right. The pipe. The pipe's been made. It's sitting there. Literally, if the president approves this project, 20,000 jobs to construct this pipeline will happen. And here, here's the, the double, triple whammy, what this project does, at least in my, from my perspective. It deals with our present economic issue. Because no matter what you see in these varying numbers on unemployment, we still have a real problem with not enough people working in this country at decent jobs. That's exactly right. Number we do. two, we need more energy independence and not windmills in people's backyards i'm talking we still are dependent upon coal and petroleum let's face it and let's produce it here and that does a couple things first of all it brings down the cost of fuel which affects the entire economy but moreover it affects our foreign policy let's not kid ourselves absolutely who would you rather buy oil from canada <laughs> yes. or opec absolutely a, a friend or a neighbor in canada i, I just and it, here again these are not to me conservative liberal D and R kind of issues. These are just common sense, and I just don't understand why uh, 
why there's so much difference between both sides on this case? I, well, I mean, it's politics, Les. I mean, the president is, is looking what at this. you're telling me I'm too naive is what you're saying. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I know for sure you're not. <laughs> but the president's looking at this from a purely political standpoint. He's not looking at this from he's trying to get, do the, take the best path for him politically to get reelected. Right. He, he, the fact of the matter is multiple unions are for this project. Right. Some of his base are for sure. this project. The only people out there that don't want this project are the environmentalists. Right. The fact of the matter is, the Canadians are going to sell this oil to China. Correct. And we're going to lose that oil forever. They're not going to wait for the United yeah. States. You can't, you can't turn that pipeline around. <laughs> no, you, you, you can't. It's just, it's just a right. poor policy. At a time when unemployment's been uh, close to 9% for months, right. a, a project that is ready to go. Uh, and he won't approve it. It's uh, it's really borders on ridiculous. Well, Congressman, you keep up the good fight. Thanks for spending time with us. And I wish you a Merry Christmas to you and your family. And, uh, uh, boy, I appreciate you keeping in touch and spend the, spending time to keep us informed. Well, you're welcome, Les. And Merry Christmas to everyone out All right. there listening. And we're going to do a little 